Good evening, Australia. Welcome to The Platform. I'm Michael Gazzilni. Love and best wishes to everybody all around the country. A really super fantastic show coming up. We've got Tony Ayres from uh, Matchbox Pictures uh, on the couch. We've got um, Brian Mannix from the Uncanny X-Men. Yes, right back from the 80s. Uh, uh, Warwick Kappa and uh, Rosie are floating around the building somewhere. And a beautiful musical act by a beautiful person called Enfa Jones. He'll be finishing the show. But let's have a look at the great man, Tony is from Matchbox Pictures. If everyone has one story which defines them, then this is mine. This story is about my mother, the nightclub singer. In 1964, my mother followed an Australian sailor to Melbourne. Uncle, Uncle Bill. Bill. Not Uncle. Father. That was the year our lives changed forever. I didn't get a chance to tell you, but there's um, someone else living there as well. Hello. My Uncle. mum moved in. Hody is. thank you very much for coming on the platform. You're an amazing person, an acclaimed director, uh, head of uh, Matchbox Productions. Where did it all start? Um, I guess I had a, you know, like a tricky childhood, which I ended up turning into a film. And uh, one of the th ways I responded to that was to just write things, like just, you know, as a way of processing how I was feeling about the world. And, um, and from there, you know, I, I, it was both therapeutic, but also I liked what I wrote and I started showing people. And so it kind of came from writing. Um, and then I went to art school and film school and tried to channel that impulse into um, something I could make a, a, a turn into a career. Tony, how was um, life as a young teenager when, when mum, mum had an early departure? Uh, was dad coping well? Um, I had an Australian stepfather, which is why I've got the name Ayres. Of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, he was an amazing man, very yeah. gentle. He was a sailor. He, he came back after my mother died and basically looked after me. I lived in a house with him for three years, but he died when I was 14. God bless so, um, so you're I, you know, I was kind of orphaned very early. And I think that's why you're so spiritually resilient and so, so humble and beautiful soul because tough times, certainly tough times growing up. And, and you're behind so many uh, spectacular and successful productions, but we never see the great man. Now, it's great to see you and, and be in your wonderful presence because you're, you're quite humble, aren't you? Um, you know, we see your names behind, um, you know, all, all the great uh, achievements, but... Um, born and raised in Australia? I was, I was born in Macau, which is oh, near Hong Kong. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, I came here when I was three. Oh, OK. Yeah. So I, I've been writing stories about that and very conscious that at the time there weren't many people writing stories about the Chinese experience in Australia. And um, so I felt like it was something that, you know, a story that I personally wanted to tell, but that was actually important to tell. Yeah. And uh, the Home Song Stories was like part of a trilogy of pieces. Like when I was at film school, the first thing I wrote was a piece called The Long Ride, which is a story of those three central characters who. Be, who became the central characters in the film. And then I did a TV uh, drama called uh, Ghost Story with the same three characters. You know, and, and then the third piece was the Home Song Stories, which was um, basically the story of the year my mother died and oh, the, the trauma that, the, you know, the craziness that was led up to it. And you were very young, how old were you? I was 11 at the time, mm. so it was, uh, and what was amazing was that um, the film is a roller coaster. It's a big emotional roller coaster, and uh, what was amazing was that everything that happened in the film w was true. You know, it was it, it was kind of this um, extraordinary um, outpour uh, opportunity to pour out a lot of stuff that had happened to me. But isn't that amazing? Then I had to sort of shape it and turn it into a drama that other people could understand mm. as well. How old were you when you first started working on that? Um, oh, it was 10, 12 years ago, so mm. I was in my mid-40s, early 40s when I started working on it. What did you do before this uh, creative uh, masterpiece, Tony? Um, 
I mean, before you entered this, this exciting career? Because most parents always say to kids these days, oh no, do something, you know, don't, don't do these creative things because you might not get a job, but <laughs> we're not all as lucky as the great man Tony is. So I was pretty, I was uh, basically a student to my late 20s. Yes. You know, uh, I was, I kind of went, f I went to university, then I went to art school, then I went to film school, and then I went to, back to university, then I went to another film school. I kind of was, wasn't sure what I wanted to do, like, I was interested in academia, I was uh, studying philosophy and literature, I could have gone in a, towards an academic career. Um, and then I studied visual arts and I could have gone in that direction as well, but it was probably um, when I, I was always interested in writing and I was interested in making pictures and so I put the two and two together and went to art, uh, to film school and that was probably when everything sort of coalesced and made sense. Isn't it amazing how the universe sort of conspires and, and puts it all together? All, all the things we've ever done yeah. which we think aren't going to fall together and they all work out and if we didn't do this and that and isn't it amazing? I try to tell friends of mine, you know, especially their, their kids these days, mm. you know, who are a bit anxious about what they're going to do, mm. that sometimes you don't have to rush into it, no. that you can actually take your time and... And go with the flow? Yeah. To really yeah. surrender to... Yeah. And um, Matchbox Box Productions, we, we see it, we hear it, I, I know um, quite a bit about it, but for our viewers, tell us about um, when uh, the company was formed and what sort of projects um, uh, you've created. Okay, um, Matchbox Pictures started, uh, we, we have our 10th anniversary this month. Congratulations. In, yes, uh, so it started when I had a company with my partner uh, called Big and Little Films and then, then we had friends who were producers and we just decided to all team up and form a, um, a bigger kind of company. And I think um, it was a time when there were, a lot, there were a lot of small companies in Australia, like one or two people, and then there were like a handful of big companies, but there was nothing in between. And so we felt like, you know, we, we wanted to give it a go, see what would happen if we form something in between so that we had a bit of a bigger market presence and the um, experiment was entirely successful like it uh, within 18 months we uh, had an approach from NBC Universal yes. um, who were looking to uh, acquire um, production companies from English speaking territories mm. uh, but not American so so they their first acquisition was Carnival who do Downton Abbey who did Downton Abbey and um, and Matchbox was one of the early acquisitions. So you know, after congratulations, Tony. Yeah. Let's have a quick look at a clip to see what the exciting adventures you've been up to. That's amazing, Tony. So many award-winning productions, and um, name some of the um, um, some of the wonderful work you've um, you've created. Well, probably my uh, best TV experience. My first one of my first TV experiences was um, the Slap, which was Christos Chalkis's uh, award. You know, massive hit. You know, it was such a massive novel, and uh, we got the rights to adapt it to TV, and. Um, it was, you know, incredibly successful. Like it got nominated for International Emmy and BAFTA. It sold all around the world. Got remade in America, and it did very well in Australia. It won all, everything under the sun. So that was a great experience. But before that, you know, like I, I did a comedy series with uh, Rebel Wilson called Bogan Pride, which um, one of your guests, Brian Mannix, was in. And um, uh, I've, uh, you know, I've directed some TV as well. And then the Matchbox thing. You know, after the slap, you know, I've done sh a show with Brian Brown and Sam Neill called Old School. I worked on um, 
uh, a kids show called Nowhere Boys, which actually won an international Emmy a couple of years ago, and that it's just filming its fourth season at the moment, Amazing. and actually had a feature film spin-off as well. Um, I have, uh, and I created that, and I created that, uh, a show called Glitch, mm. which is about to do its third season. How does it all work? So once uh, something's produced, is that, um, is it then presented to the networks or do the networks yeah. come to you? Or how does it all work to simplify? Well, it's, it's a long process. Every TV show, especially in my area, which is the scripted in drama, um, takes many years to, uh, for, you know, goes going from the idea to pitching it to a network and getting them involved and then developing it with, you usually develop with the TV station. So, you know, you, you have to have very clear and good reasons for why you want to make something, mm. you know, like you can't rely on your past or you, yeah. you can't rely on your track record. You've got to actually stand for the work itself. Indeed. Well, you certainly stood for that wonderful movie you made. And uh, I, I suppose there's got to be passion uh, within. Yeah. Yeah, mm. you have to feel passionate about what you do because everything takes years and everything involves like millions and millions of dollars. So, mm. so you know, and there are so many uh, pitfalls and obstacles along the way that unless you feel as though it's something you really mm. are prepared to dedicate yourself to, it's, it's usually not worth it. And one last question, Tony. What are the plans for The Great Man over the next five years? I, um, I have been starting to look internationally. Uh, I've got some early shows in development with some international broadcasters, um, a couple in America, a couple in England, and there's, you know, a film in America I'm, I'm keen to, to be involved in. So, so th like, I've worked entirely in Australia my entire career, but I feel like unless I give it a stab now, I'll probably, it's probably going to be too late. So mm, I'm kind of looking, amazing, I'm looking overseas. I really appreciate coming on the on, on our show. It's it, it's a great honour. Thank you so much. Oh, no. you know, <laughs> it's I a really, pleasure. It's a pleasure. I really enjoy listening to you, and I'm sure the viewers have. But thanks very much, and um, you, you teach us a lot. And um, thank you very much for watching. We'll be back very shortly with Funny Man Warwick Kappa. Don't go away. <laughs>